where we, of course, like we have our favorite seasons probably. It might not be winter, okay? But maybe it is, but for me, it's not winter. Um, but we might have our favorite seasons that we're thinking about, the things that we love about each season that's important and has its role. But when we talk about our, the seasons of our soul and our spiritual lives, each one is important. And each one has a role. So throughout this series, uh, the next four weeks, we're going to dive into um, really the seasons of the the weather in a way and see how they compare to the nature of our heart and our soul and our attitude. So we're going to talk about the different four different seasons of our soul when it comes to our faith journey and our relationship with Jesus. Because the reality is... Just like flowers bloom and grass grows and leaves fall and snow comes, things change in our spiritual lives too. Things change in our personal lives. Just like seasons of the weather, our journey with Jesus, right, it takes time to grow. It takes time to mature in Christ, right? It doesn't just develop overnight. There are things that happen that are really good. There are things that happen in our life that maybe we struggle with. It doesn't just take one good season in our lives that we cling to. But it's about the rhythms and patterns and seasons, both good and bad, that come and go in our lives. And throughout these four weeks, I think you're going to find a lot of similarities between the seasons of the weather and the seasons of our soul. So this morning, we're going to start in the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, in the book, or in the Bible, we find all kinds of wisdom literature um, in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's written really in a similar way to Psalms and Proverbs. And the intent of the book is to demonstrate that life really is meaningless without God guiding us and without enjo- us enjoying life near to him. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting in verse 1, says this. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. I think we we get the picture here. There is a time for everything. For joy, for sorrow, for anticipation, for pain. And I'm sure we can all agree, as we read this, that we have experienced these things in life, right? We have been through each of these different things, each of these different seasons. We're in a season right now. And as we know, like, our life isn't made up into, like, four equal parts that we just cycle through regularly, right? We don't spend, like, the first quarter in spring and the second quarter in summer and so on. Sometimes they go quickly, sometimes it seems they last forever, sometimes they seem like really bad, sometimes they seem really good, but regardless, right, as we've talked about, they have a purpose that fits into the larger narrative of your life, and God never lets any of it go to waste. So today, we get to start the first one, which is summer. My favorite season, I'm sure some of your favorite seasons, summer is the best. Like, who doesn't love summer? Maybe you don't, but I don't know. Who doesn't love summer? There's excitement, there's anticipation, there's all kinds of fun things going on, there's joy, there's warmer weather. When I think of summer, I think of how it is depicted in a certain movie character. Let's watch it together. Poor Olaf doesn't get to experience uh, summer, which is very disappointing, right? Because it is so great. Practically, like, we know that summer, it's the warmest season of the year. It comes after spring, right before fall. It brings so much excitement and energy, longer days of sunlight, warmer weather to enjoy the outdoors, more times for vacations. As an adult, like, summers are 
awesome for all of those reasons. But as a kid, right, summers are even more awesome, right? You, you anticipated it differently. It was what you looked forward to all school year to be off for the summer, not waking up early, playing in the backyard, family trips, playing with your neighbor friends. Like there was, there were no worries, right? All seemed good. All seemed fine in the world. And summer in our spiritual lives is really similar to that. Summer is a season of abundance and light in our spiritual lives. In our soul, right, summer is when everything is going really well. When life is good, when there are no worries, everything just seems to be going right. There doesn't really seem to be any problems. Things are smooth. Things are easy going. If you've been there in life, you don't want to leave. Before this, Zach and I lived in Lansing, uh, Michigan, and worked at a church there. And, like, when I think about, like, a summer season, like a long season, that's what I think about. That season of life. Like, I just, there were really no worries. I loved my job. I loved our house. I loved our friends. Like, I was hearing from God very clearly. Life was fun. There, There wasn't really many bad things going on in life. Like, really, there were a lot of things to look forward to. There really weren't many worries at all. There was a lot of abundance. There was a lot of light. But what's interesting is that I don't think I noticed that it was a summer season until it was all over and done with. And then after that was COVID. And we all know, we all know how that season went. Okay. So like it wasn't until that where you're like, oh, man, that. I think that was a summer season. You, typically, you don't know that you're in it at the time. With summer, like more than any other season, we don't always notice that it's going on in the moment because we're focused, like we're not focused on all the things, um, that, or we are focused on all the things that are going well and just like happy, go lucky, live in everything. We aren't analyzing all the bad things that are happening. And so it goes by really fast because right, good times always go by faster than bad times. That's just how it is. So what we want to do uh, today and the rest of our time together is take some time in this season to figure out how do we like actually use this season effectively and strengthen our relationship with God, our understanding of ourself and our mission in the world. Because if things are going really good and things are going really well and we don't have really a lot of worries, what a great time to figure out all these three different things when we're in this joyful season. First one, our relationship with God. The summer season is a perfect time to strengthen our relationship with God. Because when we are in the summer of our soul, right, our relationship with God deepens. It's easy, it's energetic, it's fun, it comes natural to us. We're going to like love going to church. We're going to always want to be there. We may be hearing from God really clearly with not really much effort on our end. It's kind of like, oh yeah, like God's speaking to me and I'm not really even looking for it. When we read our Bible, it's fun. We can't wait to go on a walk and, and talk to God in prayer. Like we may be spending a lot of time with other Christians. In the summer, we learn things about God that we never have before, right? The Bible's coming alive to us. We, we see God more clearly. Things are, are coming to our vision. We can acknowledge that, he, that God is sovereign, that he is kind, and that he is near, and that he is gracious. We see more of him. In summer, our depth of faith grows because we can see more of God and what he is doing. If we go to Psalm 103, we see a man named David. He's writing about all the good things that God was doing at the time and in his life. And as he's reflect, reflecting on the gifts that God gave him, he writes this in verse, verse 1. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. 
He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. So notice in this psalm, right, David is writing all the things that God has given him. And he doesn't write, hey, like, thank you, God, for giving me what I wanted when I wanted it, right? Like, he starts listing all these things, like the forgiving of sins and the healing of diseases and redeeming us from death, right? Showing us love, showing us compassion, giving us what we need. We don't just receive these things in the summer. We get that. They're always available to us. But it's in the summer, right, that that we pay attention to them a little more. We pay attention to what God is doing a little more. We focus on them. We commit to strengthening our relationship with Jesus because we won't always be in a season, right, where we can acknowledge those things. Where, where these things are always true, right, we'll get this in a couple weeks, but like in a winter season, you don't always acknowledge like the goodness of God. You don't always see it. And so it's in the summer season that we get to strengthen our relationship with God for what's coming next. Number two. Number two, we get to strengthen our, rela- our, tra- our transformation of self. This is a perfect time, right, to dive into the transformation of our self. It's a time to look inward and not just all the good, right, but at all the stuff that needs fixing. In the summer season, we become more obedient to what God wants us to do, and we become more open to people's accountability, right? We start to understand our identity in Christ a little more. We start to become more like Jesus, who we are, like experiences this transformation. When we're in a winter season, we don't want like to look in, inward at ourselves and be like, hmm, what, what's all the stuff that needs fixing? No, it's in the summer season that we're like, we're in a good place. Things are going well. So now is the time I'm going to look inward and see how I need to, myself needs to be transformed. Romans 12, 2 says this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Notice here it says, transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. Not just changing the way you behave, but that it's deeper than behavior. In the summer, we start to look different. We start to act different. We start to talk different because we're allowing, right, God to transform us, to change us. We're allowing other Christians to speak into our lives and challenge us without getting offended. We are growing. We are maturing. We are becoming really the best version of ourselves, that the, the person that God has created us to be. Our soul and our heart becomes refreshed by the Spirit of God at work within us. And so in the summer, we're going to go to this ultimate source of refreshment to fill us, to transform us, where in other seasons, right, we might go to other things that temporarily fix the thirst that we have. And number three, our mission in the world. When our faith is in a summer season, it is the perfect time to look at the deeper mission and purpose we actually have in this world. Because when we are in a good and healthy and flourishing place in our lives, where we're thriving, where we're growing, where we're doing well, we're going to be able, more likely, to look past ourselves and our selfishness and what we want and look at others. Look at our mission in the world. Look at our greater purpose for why we are where we are. And if we are doing well spiritually, right, if we're doing well with God, if if things are going well in life, People are going to be able to see that. Like, it's not really something that, we, that can be faked. Because when we are reflecting the spirit of God in our lives, right, he's, he's pouring out of us. Like, he, people see it in our conversations. People see it in our interactions. People see it in how we treat people. People see it in how we speak to people, how we make decisions. And so when we're in a good place, the energy that energy is going to come off. Like, we're not going to be able to, like, fake it. It's just not going to happen. And so when we're in a good place, our life can actually be a reflection of Jesus and encouragement to others. First Thessalonians 5.17 
says encourage each other and build each other up. Not in like a condescending or pushy or annoying way. People don't like want your summer energy completely taking over their winter like empty. But you can be an example by bringing them hope that summer is coming and the season that they are in will not last forever. And you can walk with them in whatever season they are in. You can care for them with the energy you have that they don't have. Our mission in the world is to love people and lead them to Jesus. So just like our relationship with God is strengthened and just like the transformation of ourself is deepening, our mission when it comes to caring for others is also developing because we have the time and the energy to think about it. Let's just be real. Like, we're humans. Like, there's natural born selfishness that, that we all have. And so in the summer, we get to not only deepen our relationship with God and transform ourselves, but it's a time to look at others a little bit more, our mission in the world. In the summer, we see that life and everything that comes with it is a gift, right? It's, it's to be received with gratitude. And when we see life as a gift, we are prone to see each day right, as a blessing and fill each moment with, with reason, with time, with energy to praise God, to understand ourselves more deeply, to love others and be there for them more authentically. As we know, summer won't last forever. Another season will come, and the excitement and the passion that, that we have in summer will fade, but the transformation that we experience and the more deeper we fall in love with Jesus and the passion for others that happened in that season won't just disappear. In fact, those things will sustain us through the more difficult seasons ahead. So my prayer for us this morning as we start this series, obviously this one, this is a good week. It's a fun week. This is, there's not too much bad things we're talking about. This is good, a season of abundance, a season of light when everything is going well. So my prayer is that if we feel like we are in that season right now, don't cruise through it acting like you don't need God. Use the time to embrace it. Right, to lean in, to, to figure out what, what does God want to do in my life in the good times so that when the bad times come, I'm a little more prepared. And if you're not in a summer season, my prayer is that you hold on to hope that it is coming. And you can put these things into practice right now. Like the, the reality is like, yes, this is, this is a, a series about a s week about summer. But like we always can dive into like how do we d deepen our relationship with God? How do we deepen our transformation of self? How do we deepen the, our mission in the world? So my prayer is that wherever we are, whatever season we're in, we would remind ourselves that the Lord is with us in it. And that those three things allow us to mature and grow into more divide, devoted Christ followers. <clears throat> Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that as we dive into your word, as we see more of you, that we would be reminded that you go before us. You have prepared the way for us. God, you remind us that there are different seasons in life, there are different moments in life, but that you are there through it all, and that I pray that we would continue to lean into you in whatever season that is. God, I thank you for the gift of summer, <laughs> a summer of our soul. I pray that we all have experienced that kind of season, even if it was for a day. God, I pray that in, those, in that summer season, we would the Bible would come alive to us. Your word would come alive. Who you are would speak to us in a new way. God, I pray that we would dive into our relationship with you and how we need to be transformed and then how we need to reflect that in the world. Jesus, I pray for those of us who don't feel like we're in that season. 
I pray you would give us hope that it's coming and that the season that we are in is not wasted. Be with us the rest of our time together today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, one of the things we talk about a lot here is just this idea of responding to what God is doing in our lives um, and how he is at work within us. Um, so one of the, you know, we do that through many different things. Um, but what I would love for you to do today, I know we have a small, small group, so this will be even easier. Um, I want you to find like one or two people, group up, let's just chat um, about some of these questions, maybe anything that stood out to us um, this morning about summer, and uh, then we will go from there. So have at it, find a couple people, and we'll get moving.